Hello ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for clicking on this video. What I have for you in this one is 40 tips and tricks for Red Dead Redemption 1. Now the reason I'm making this video as like the ultimate strategy guide for the PS4 and Nintendo Switch players, as well as anybody and everybody who wants to get better at this game, from finding gold bars to ways you can make money, the best ways you can make money, and just a little bit of tips and secrets and everything that's going to help you in your upcoming Red Dead Redemption 1 gameplays. Starting at number 1, we have the campsite. The campsite will offer free fast travel as well as the availability to save your game and change your outfit. If you want to fast travel, just pick travel to destination and you can go anywhere you want for free. Coming in at number two, I have the high stakes poker game here in Blackwater. You'll notice it doesn't actually pop up on the map, but if you're wearing the gentleman's attire like Jack is right now, it will actually pop up on the mini map. This puts two poker games inside of Blackwater. At number three, we have pardon letters. These are the letters that Seth first introduces you to that instead of paying off your bounties for cash, you can just do it for free with a pardon letter. At number four, I'm going to give you the movie theater. Just like in Red Dead Redemption 2, you can watch a couple of movies in Red Dead Redemption 1. One location is here in Blackwater. The other location is going to be in Armadillo. And number five is going to be speeding up time. You can go to any bed you want and save your game, and this will speed it up by six hours. And unlike Red Dead Redemption 2, where you actually had a limit by like two or three, you can do it as much as you like. You can just keep saving and saving and saving and saving and saving, and six hours will keep going by. Coming in at number six, and one of my favorite things to do in Red Dead Redemption 1 is walk into the, something like the Bank of Blackwater... Go behind the counter and crack one of the safes open. An armadillo isn't going to be the only location to crack a safe open. I'm about to give you more locations. In McFarland's ranch at the foreman's office, you can also walk inside here, go to the back, and find a safe to crack open. Here in Blackwater, inside of their bank, you'll find another safe to crack open. Unfortunately, we can't go behind that door and go upstairs because there's like four, five, or six safes upstairs. Unfortunately, we just have to rely on the one by the front door. Down here in Mexico at El Matadero, you will find yet another safe to crack open. It's located inside this barn, upstairs, unattended. There's a few gang hideouts in New Austin, starting with Solomon's Folly, that also has a safe you can crack into.
The other gang hideout where you can find a safe to crack is going to be right here at Fort Mercer. There's a bank located here in Chuparosa. Unfortunately, I don't think there's any safe to crack open, and if there is, we sure can't get to it. No different than what occurred in Red Dead Redemption 2 as well, and even Red Dead Revolver, our newspapers. You can buy these and it'll give you up-to-date current information, like how Jack is in 1914, and Europe is at war, or like how Landon Ricketts passed away, sadly. Coming in at number 8 is going to be, in my opinion, the best location to find and skin 8 snakes. Now, the reason I'm putting this in the video is because that's actually a requirement for one of the outfits, like the outfit I'm wearing right now, Expert Hunter. It's going to make you find and locate 8 snakes. Now, the thing about Red Dead Redemption is there are snakes everywhere. But just because you go looking for something, don't mean you're going to find it. And what I've learned, especially with the help of another YouTube video, is that down here in Mexico, this spot right down here, southeast of Escalera, right over the Armadillo logo, is the best spot to find and kill eight different snakes. Now, don't give up on it too quick. I'm not saying you're going to come here and there's going to be snakes just swarming you. You might have to linger around, walk around a little bit, but eventually you're going to find what you're looking for. Promise you that. You hang around this location long enough down in Mexico, I promise you. You will find all eight snakes that you need in no time. Just give it a chance. You'll see. But don't take my word for it. Alright, our next location at number nine. I bring you to Rio Bravo for the best way to kill a cougar with a stick of dynamite. Now, again, kind of like the other thing. Cougars are everywhere. But in my opinion, Rio Bravo might be your best bet. Now just like the snakes, just linger around, give it a chance, and you'll find what you're looking for. I guarantee you that. Alright, coming in at number 10, something that Red Dead Redemption 2 was missing that Red Dead Redemption 1 had. Horseshoes. You can find one here in McFarland's Ranch. If you come up to Rathskeller Fork, you can also find a horseshoes location. And if you head down to Mexico, down to Los Hermanos, you can also find the third and final horseshoes location. The town at Thieves Landing is more developed by the time 1911 comes around, even with a whole saloon, a hotel, and lots of other stuff. But it's kind of similar to Van Horn in this aspect. You can kill everybody and you will never get a wanted level. There is no law enforcement in Thieves Landing. Besides murdering everybody in the entire town at free will, I have number 12, Liar's Dice. See, Liar's Dice is another thing that was excluded from Red Dead Redemption 2, but was a fan favorite here on Red Dead Redemption 1. Every player gets five dice, and you have to bid on how many dice you think is on the table, combined. 
There are two other Liar's Dice locations as well. One is right down here in Mexico at Casa Madrugada. The third and final location is also down here in Mexico at Escalera. My personal favorite town in all of Red Dead Redemption 1. Scattered around the map in a few different locations, like here in McFarland's Ranch for example, I give you the Night Watch jobs. This is a way that you can earn a little bit of extra cash once a night around the map. All you gotta do is explore the town, follow a dog, the dog will lead you to trouble, and get back and collect your cash. The night watch job down in Mexico can be found in Chuparosa at the Banco. The third and final night watch will be located in Blackwater. If you kill all the bison and buffalo that spawn all the way up here by Blackwater and literally just take out the whole herd, they will permanently disappear from the game forever. So just be careful with that if you want to go skin and hunt all these things, they'll be gone forever. It's a little easter egg to how in the real world we actually did kill all the bison and buffalo like that. Down in Mexico, you're going to run into a stranger mission where he's going to ask for beaver furs and flowers and uh, bird feathers. Well, the beaver location is right up here north of Blackwater in Great Plains. This is where I find my beavers, and this is where you will probably find yours too. Howdy, friend. At number 16, I have the Pleasance House. This is the free safe house you can get through stranger missions. While all the other safe houses are either gifted to you through the storyline, or you have to buy them for some sort of amount via cash. To unlock that stranger mission and get access to the Pleasance House, you have to first do Leah Johnson's first mission in Armadillo. Excuse me. What's going on here? I got me one of them Williamson boys. I got me one of them idiots who give marshals. After you complete this mission with Marshal Leah Johnson, that stranger mission will essentially become unlocked on the map, and that'll give you access to the Pleasant's house. Now, located a little east of Armadillo and west of McFarland's Ranch, you'll find this question mark titled Water and Honesty. Up here, on top of the question mark, you'll find a random NPC waiting for you to patiently talk to him about something. Excuse me, friend. Mind if I rest up at your camp a spell? That'd be my pleasure. Man needs a break from this desiccated nope. land. Man needs a wellspring on his proper tie to ranch here. Makes sense. Yeah. Why, you know, just last week, I was over at Old Pleasant's house. Now, I think I may have found something, but... Old Coot that owns the place threatened to call the law down on me, so... All you have to do is go up to the Pleasant's house and talk to the old man standing there sweeping with his broom. He wants $200 for it. 
Now, if you don't have the $200, you can honestly just kill this guy, loot him, and you'll have the deed. Take it back to the other guy, and then kill that guy, and then take the deed yet again. And then the Pleasant's house is probably all yours. Well, I don't know. Maybe for $200, I could give you the deed to this land, find myself a place up in Blackwater. Although I never could stand the people down there. No, sir. Just get out! Now you'll notice that as we're holding the deed, this location has actually turned green and has become a safe house location icon. So all you have to do is return to that other guy and give him the deed back. But make sure you don't leave. Kill him and then take it back. He's that purple question mark that's popping up to the southeast corner of Armadillo where we first met him. So at the moment, you do have to go back to him and give him the deed back. But don't leave until you take the deed back off of him. And that's how it becomes free. I sure hope you ain't empty handed. Well, howdy. You got the deed? Yep. Here it is. Yeah. Oh, there's blood on this deed, Marston. I didn't tell you to kill the poor old man. Here, take the money. That old bastard's got a son living up in Blackwater, so I'd be real careful not to publicize this sale too much. Unless killing entire families is a pleasure of yours, of course. Good luck with the property, McAllister. Yeah. Lord have mercy. So if we check our inventory real quick, you'll see that that deed is now missing. So all we gotta do... Is a little bit of that run up to him and loot him back for that deed and the pleasant house deed should just be back in our inventory yet again just like that the game is claiming we have the pleasant deed Alright, I'm gonna switch gears for just a moment and talk to you about some of the things I've noticed about Undead Nightmare, if that's alright with you. So first and foremost, the only effective way to really kill a zombie is by shooting it in the head. Shooting it in the leg, body, arm, that's not gonna work. You need to go straight for the top of the face, and off it goes. That's the only way to kill a zombie, just so you know. Besides guns, you can also use fire, or torches. Fairly early, pretty much right at the introduction of this game, you are tasked with cleaning up graveyards, and you are given a torch to do just that. You are told to burn all the zombies alive at the cemetery. Here, mister. Take this. If you can burn them, maybe you can put their souls to rest. I'm mister! If you see my Uncle Mordecai, you burn him. Burn him real good, you hear? Once you get to the cemetery, all you have to do is start lighting the coffins on fire, and then the dead will start rising from the ground. So you don't have to use guns if you want to, but if you do, just make sure they're headshots. Nothing else is gonna work. But you also are given this torch now, and you can just start lighting the zombies on fire if you will. Eventually the boss of the graveyard will appear out from the ground as well, and that's when you know you've almost cleaned it all up. Clean up the boss, and the remaining zombies, and the whole cemetery should be all cleaned out.
After you've cleansed the Blackwater grave sites, you're going to be tasked to go back to Blackwater and now clean up the town of Blackwater, which almost doesn't make any sense because you were just there and, you know, I don't know. Just so you know, though, you don't have to clean up every single town you come across in this game. Yes, you have to clean up Blackwater right now. Yes, you're going to have to clean up McFarland's Ranch and Armadillo and Plainview to do the required stranger missions. Yes, you're going to have to clean up Los Hermanas later. You know, things like that are going to be required if you want to beat this game. But just because a town like Thieves Landing or Duchess Hideout at Cochiny or Manzanita Post or whatever you can think of right now is available to save, that's, it's not required to do to get to the completion of this game. Doing these town saving and stuff will reward you with free guns and free things like that. Free dynamite later for when you need that for Landon Ricketts Stranger Mission. But just so you know, you don't have to save every single town you come across. Just the bare necessity ones, like Blackwater. In order to complete Undead Nightmare and get the final mission and get to the end of Undead Nightmare, you must complete every stranger mission that is available. That includes the Sasquatch Stranger Mission up here in West Elizabeth. You have to go out of your way to hunt and find and kill six Sasquatches. And the final one is up to you. Shoot me, human. Shoot me. Oh, I will, you foul creature of the night. Another of the required stranger missions is going to be Bonnie McFarlane in McFarlane's Ranch. You're also going to have Marshall Leah Johnson, that's an armadillo. He's another stranger mission you'll have to complete. Sorry, boys. She didn't give me a whole lot of choice. Down in Plainview, that's where you'll meet the film director that we saw in Red Dead Redemption 1 story. He's over here trying to shoot a movie with live-action zombies. Real creative, real original, real impressive. He's another stranger mission that's required. Along with capturing that thing that's on John Marston's uh, shoulder right there. I'll explain where to find one of those in a minute. Another stranger mission that might not seem like a stranger mission, but is a stranger mission that needs to be completed to get the final mission in this game is the Missing Souls mission at Fort Mercer. You have to go find Melissa, or whatever her name is, bring her back to complete that to get that final mission as well. well thank you for your input, citizen. I'm glad you find the last so funny. <laughs> My pleasure. Do you think this poor girl's family finds life quite so funny right now? Family? I assume she was a common killer. She's a missing person. Missing presumed dead, I guess. But you keep cracking them. Once you make it down into Mexico, whenever that point may be, you'll be tasked with going to Los Hermanes. That's where you'll find the sister from Red Dead Redemption 2 struggling with a zombie. But she's a boss ass bitch, what it do, and it's not a big thing. Look at you. Anyways, she's gonna task you with cleaning up Los Hermanes, and it's probably the biggest town cleanup that you're gonna have in this one. She's not necessarily a stranger mission, she's actually part of the main task, but like I said, you don't have to clean up every town, but Las Hermanas behind John right there is the one you're gonna have to clean up if you want to get to the final mission of this game. Uh, but I appreciate the advice. Unfortunately, many of my nuns are not so resourceful. Down at Casa Madrigada, you will find your final stranger mission in the form of Landon Ricketts. He is the final piece to this puzzle. As long as you do all the stranger missions, you will be able to get the final mission. Now, like I said, you don't have to clean up every town. You're going to have to clean up Blackwater because you have to. To get Bonnie's, you're going to have to clean up McFarland's Ranch. To get Marshall's, you're going to have to clean up Armadillo. To get the film guy completed, you're going to have to do Plainview. Fort Mercer is already a safe zone, so you're good there. Casa Madrigada with Langen Ricketts is also a safe zone, so you're good there. And then, yes, you are going to have to clean up Los Hermanas. And then also, obviously, you have to clean up every single graveyard that's available too. So keep that in mind. After you complete town saving, like right here in McFarland's Ranch, only the zombies that have X marks are going to be the ones that have ammo. So if you see a body of a zombie and there's not an X to match it on the minimap, 
there's a very 100% chance that that thing is not going to have any ammo in any way, shape, or form. And then also on the mini-map, you'll see these green little circle uh, dots. That's where you can get some ammo as well. But as far as the zombies go, only the ones that have X's on the mini-map carry ammo. That one I just walked past, no ammo, I promise you. Alright, this next one at 22 is a real doozy. See how I just killed one and we got to four? Now I'm going to kill another one. And nothing's happening. I want to talk to you about the headless zombie glitch. It's the most game-breaking thing ever. Now why is it that now that I'm killing them, my progress isn't being recorded and nothing is happening anymore? Do you see that? Right there in front of us. That zombie doesn't have a head. How about that? So that is the headless zombie glitch, as I like to call it. It's like an automatic timer, and it's the most game-breaking thing ever. Whenever this pops up, we always have to just go right to our autosave and reload the game. Playing Undead Nightmare on a no-death playthrough, or a no-fuck-up playthrough, or whatever you want to call this, would never be uh, possible. Look at this guy. No head. Look at this girl. No head. Headless zombie glitch. Once you see this, just don't do anything. Just start your game, reload your previous autosave, and that'll restart your timer until you see the headless zombie glitch again. Don't believe me? I'll show you all the times I saw the headless zombie glitch on just this one playthrough alone. Just kidding. I'm not going to give you the whole show. You're just going to have to take my word on it that, man, it honestly happens like every 30 minutes or so. So, if this ever happens to you, just reload your game or something. Another strategy that might help you in dealing with the zombies in these cemeteries is you can run around this uh, burning coffin, and that will actually ignite the zombies on fire as well, too. It's a new strategy I just realized. I didn't really see it before, but now I do see it. Also, be cautious, because you, uh, huh, you can also light yourself on fire, as you see as well. One thing that I get criticized for when I play these games and when people watch me play is my use of Deadeye. So you don't have to use it as a way to just mark your targets. You can use it as a way to slow everything down and really aim and just shoot. That's how I usually use my Deadeye anyways, and I always get criticized for it. How do you use your Deadeye? You should probably just try to use it to your advantage, is all I'm saying. For that one stranger mission, the film guy, you're gonna need to locate one of those spitting green goo zombies, you know, these guys. You need to get one for him. And this is gonna be the location that you can find them, right up here north of Tumbleweed. Down in Mexico, Landon is going to task you with finding some dynamite for him as long as the uh, bait that Nigel West Dickens gives you. I honestly never use the bait though. Usually when I get to this point I still have the bait, so all I got to do is go find the dynamite. Now, you won't just have dynamite in John's arsenal. That's where the town saving came into play. Going and saving some of the towns, or a town, is one of the, play one of the ways that you're going to get dynamite. More dynamite. I'm running pretty low. Let me see what I can do. Thank you, John. And take care. Lucky for you, and anybody who plays this game too, Landon Ricketts is located right next to the location that's going to give you dynamite. Abraham Reyes' hideout will give you that dynamite. That is a nice coincidence. Now still, that doesn't change the fact that you don't have to save every single town that exists in this game. The safe zones are going to be Fort Mercer and Fort El Presidio as well as Casa Madrugada. You should save Blackwater, Armadillo, McFarland's Ranch, and Plainview. You have to do all the Stranger missions. That's true. But besides that, this is the only other location just to get the dynamite for land and rickets that you have to save to get to the end of the game. Every other town that I haven't talked about in this video, 
Don't even gotta worry about it. Whenever you completely save a town, you get awarded a weapon you don't currently possess. In our case at the moment, dynamite. That's what Landon uh, Ricketts needs, so we just need to bring it back to him. All right, all right, all right. Mr. Ricketts. Hello, sir. How have you been? As you imagine. Good. Did you get the dynamite? Yes. Mm. And the bait. Huh. Let's see. Occasionally, as you play Undead Nightmare, you're going to get a thing that pops up about a mythical creature appearing nearby. It'll be a blue zone radius like this, and you need to go inside of that, look for whatever special horse looks out of place, and capture that. Kind of like the horse I'm riding at the moment, and the one we're about to capture that's in the zone, there are definitely a handful of special mounts you can acquire in this game. Like this one, right here, look at it. It's the fire horse. Let's catch it. So you'll know that you've broken the horse, obviously, because it's the same thing that happens every time you break a horse. This horse's name is War, one of the horses of the apocalypse. Alright, I'm going to shift back and talk about Red Dead Redemption some more, now that we've talked about plenty of Undead Nightmare. Back to Red Dead Redemption, and coming in at number 28, I put Fist Fighting and Bar Brawls. Now, this is pretty peaceful. You could probably do this all day, just unarmed, just fighting people away. The only time it won't become peaceful is if you actually pull out a gun. Other than that, you could do this all day like I said. Unarmed fist fighting as a matter of fact. At number 29 you got the survivalist map and the general store. You can find things like the rabbit foot which will make you lucky and increase the items and money you loot by 20%. And the survivalist map, which will be helpful for finding flowers, and you won't have to try very hard to do that. So once you get to a pretty good location, just initiate your survivalist map. And now all these flower icons will pop up way farther away than usual. And this is going to lead me into number 30, how to collect $200 worth of flowers and herbs. Now, what this means is you have to have $200 worth of herbs on you and the best flowers in new austin for that is no doubtably going to be the red sage for every red sage you hold on to that's going to be worth two dollars the other two flowers desert sage and wild fairifew or whatever it's called are only worth a dollar so if you're trying to get the task of collecting two hundred dollars worth of herbs as quick as possible just go for the red sages That'll be $2 a piece. That's 100 red sages. As opposed to needing like 200 desert sages or 200 wild fairifew. It's still a lot, you know, 100 of these red sages is a ton. But that's how you're going to get $200 worth of herbs. And it's not going to be fun. So, if you want to know how much you're holding on to, you just go under stats, go under down to collectibles, and at the moment we're holding $9 worth. We got 4 red sage equaling 8, 1 wild fairy fuel equaling 1. So that's where the game is going to keep counting 
how many red sage you have or herbs if you will how many total and once you actually hit that number of 200 that's when you will succeed and have $200 worth of herbs collected I hope that makes sense coming in at number 31 I put gold bars and treasure hunting randomly you're gonna have this random encounter where two gunmen or so are attacking a treasure hunter all you gotta do is put them down run up to him and get the treasure map off of him and just to show you where I'm located, we're located a little bit north of Armadillo. This is where I'm used to finding the treasure hunters anyways. So he's going to give me a treasure map, and I'm going to show you where to find three gold bars here in New Austin. There is also four down in Mexico and two in West Elizabeth for a total of nine gold bars. So if you go into your inventory, you will be able to look at the treasure map that you just got from him. And when you look at the treasure map, ironically or coincidentally enough, what you see is the location of the hanging rock. So let's go over there and get our first gold bar and see what's next. Now that you've successfully gotten your first gold bar, look at the treasure map to see that it's updated to your next gold bar location. And the big key on this map is going to be the Rio del Lobo little marking in the top left corner. Because that's the location on the map. And if we look at the map, I'll show you exactly where Rio del Lobo is located. It's located right here. On this little cliffway right of Fort Mercer, south of Lake Don Julio. And don't make it hard on yourself now. Go right to that campsite so you can fast travel. All right, all right, all right. Pick travel to destination, and all you gotta do is travel to the waypoint you already created, and you're on your way. Let's go to Rio del Lobo and get the second gold bar. All right, all right, all right. And just like last time, go ahead and pull out that treasure map and see where that third and final location in New Austin is at. Now, you might recognize this house. Heck, you might even recognize this cellar entrance. I don't know, you might even recognize this basement. Where's this at? Oh boy. This is going to be in the abandoned gang hideout of Tumbleweed. Right over here. That's where you're going to find that final gold bar in New Austin. Now like I said, this is just for New Austin. Gold bar 4, 5, 6, and 7 are down in Mexico. And gold bar 8 and 9 are up in West Elizabeth, up by Blackwater and stuff like that. And just like last time, don't make it hard on yourself now. Go ahead and pull out that basic campsite or improved campsite, whatever you got. Alright, travel the destination and go to that waypoint for show. Let's go. When you get to Tumbleweed, you'll notice it's a gang hideout, but I'm not here for that. We're interested in the big house. Now, what it showed was a picture of the big house, a cellar entrance around the back, and the gold bar is in the basement. Now, let's just take what the treasure map has to offer, follow those instructions, go down through the cellar entrance into the basement, and get our next third and final gold bar in New Austin. Here it is. That's 
more like it. Now, you could look at the treasure map again, but unfortunately, like I said, that's the final one in New Austin. So until you get down to Mexico, you are not going to be able to complete any more of the gold bars. And same for the last and final two up in West Elizabeth. Until you make it up to that part, you won't be able to get up there to get the final gold bars. So we got the three. That's New Austin. The next one is going to be located right there down in Mexico. And as you can see... I'm not down in Mexico. I got missions to do up here in New Austin, so that's going to be it for the gold bar hunting expeditions, especially for you until you get down to Mexico. All right. As you can see, we have three of them, the three we just got. Now, I'll show you what it looks like when you have all nine of them. All right, so I went ahead and loaded in a farther save near the end of the game so you can see that I have all nine gold bars without over-explaining how to find them. This would be just be a nice way to get rich quick scheme, if you will. Alright, coming in at 32, I want to talk about the effects of honor. So we are in Thieves Landing. This is what Thieves Landing will offer me for all these gold bars. So, you can get more actually. I have really high honor, and Thieves Landing is a place for bandits. Low honor. If I had extremely low honor here, I would get really good prices in Thieves Landing. But I'm not going to find that here, because my honor's too high. So I gotta go to a place like McFarland's Ranch or Armadillo or something where it's like a high honor society to where I can actually get good prices on things like gold bars for example and not get ripped off. So that's the effect of honor if you will. If you have really low honor, a place like Thieves Landing is perfect for you. If you have really high honor, Thieves Landing is like the opposite location that you're trying to be at. So let's walk into McFarland's ranch, if you will. The most I could make on the most expensive gold bar in Thieves Landing was 500. And here, we're at 750. So that's the effect of honor on things as simple as like the general store, if you will. At number 33, we have cheat codes. Now, underneath the options, you will find a thing called cheats. This is where you can put on invincibility, infinite ammo, more money. You can do even more weapons, outfits, you can play as Jack. There's a bunch of things that you can do as a matter of fact. Heck, you can get the Legend of the West outfit that actually requires 100% game completion to get. You can have the Legend of the West outfit the third mission in with no regrets. So obviously after typing in every single cheat code, there is some crazy effects going on. I went from John Marston to Jack. I have some sort of like lingering filter. I have every weapon and just, I don't know, you know? Cheat codes, right? Cheat codes, woo! Alright, at 34, this is a pretty obvious one. I seem like an idiot putting this in the video, but eh, whatever, run it. John Marston and Jack Marston can't swim. And I mean like, not at all. They can walk around in the water up until about their neck, but the minute their, like, chin goes under, it's game over and we're dead. Now what's going on here is I'm trying to pull off a glitch where I can float a wagon down the river, but I'm failing miserably, so I think I'm just going to try throwing some dynamite and see where that gets me. Not too far, actually, though. And here's the part where John can't swim. And he's gone. And at 35, I have a little tip and secret for you with the cattle herding. If you hit up on the D-pad, or up on the directional arrow, I mean, which is the same thing. John will do this little arm waving motion that I, and he'll tell the cattle to move faster and move quicker and get a move on, please. So if you hit up on the D-pad while you're cattle herding, that can get a move on the cattle really quickly. And maybe that'll help you with speed running purposes or just get those damn cattle going where you need them to be, right, 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 right? The lasso is one of the most important items in this game, in my opinion. 
But John Marston will not have one until Bonnie McFarlane actually gives him one fairly early in the game. But for a little bit, you're not going to have one. So catching things like bounty targets and other things like that alive, that's, uh, that's going to be a tough one. Because you don't have a lasso. You know what I mean? When it comes to stranger missions, you can save each and every single one of them for Jack Marston later in the epilogue after John gets killed in his final mission. Kind of like Red Dead Redemption 2, you can just save every single stranger mission for John Marston. Now, when it comes to the strange man, the strange man isn't going to be waiting there for you at the end of this game for Jack Marston. So if you think you can just save him for Jack Marston, you're mistaking. Only John Marston can do the Strange Man. And that's it. Every other Stranger mission can be done by Jack. Just not this one. You can drink at the saloons just like you can in Red Dead Redemption 2. Except you don't really have much of a choice as what you get to drink, if you will. And sometimes the bartender isn't at the bar if you look right here. He's in the back room. But all you gotta do is kinda just wait at the bar and he'll eventually come forward. So you don't get to pick like a beer or a whiskey or a shot or anything like that. He's just gonna give you a shot. And I'm gonna show you what happens if you overdo it. John Marston could probably drink like 8, 9, or 10 shots or something. I'll show you what happens after 8, 9, or 10 shots. Alright, so I went ahead and cut out about 8 or 9 or 10 shots or so. Here's his final shot. He's definitely feeling it, and let's see what happens when he's had way too much to drink. Alright, now that a train has rolled into the station, let's see if John Marston can even make it onto the train. Now, trains work a little bit differently in Red Dead Redemption 1 as opposed to Red Dead Redemption 2, but a little bit similar as well. So let's get John to just skedaddle his happy ass into the train car and maybe he'll take a seat. Hopefully it won't be too hard. Now... The difference between this and Red Dead Redemption 2 is you actually can't rob anybody on the train. Like, how you can interact with all the NPCs in Red Dead Redemption 2 and say you want to rob them. Yeah, you don't have that luxury in this game. You can't rob anybody. You can point your gun at people and scare them, but there will be no robbing occurring on this train. And another thing that's different is we can't drive this train either. I can't go up to the train conductor and kick him off and then we drive the train around the map. Nope. Once the train conductor has been removed from the train, the train will actually come to a stop and that's it for the train. See, in Red Dead Redemption 2, you can actually drive the train. You can ride the train. You can rob people on the train. But in Red Dead Redemption 1, the best you can do is mostly just ride the train for fun. And, you know, you can ride it for free. You kind of just hop on it when it rolls into the station and you kind of just ride it until you're ready to get off. The train here will ride down into Mexico, uh, trains will ride up into Blackwater. There's actually two trains that go all over the place, so just, you know, kind of take your pick. But understand that about the trains. No driving them, no robbing people. And if you do shit like this, you're probably just liable to get your ass in trouble anyways. Best of luck to you with the trains. Alright, the fourth and final tip and trick I'm going to supply you with is the best way to get rich in Red Dead Redemption 1. There's a stranger mission located in Armadillo behind the movie theater. It's called Film and Entertainment or something like that. And he's going to task you with going to Thieves Landing and you're going to need $200 per game of Liar's Dice. And this is how you can get absolutely rich in Red Dead Redemption 1. After you're done speaking with him, this is when you'll head down to Thieves Landing as you try to win the deed to a property where he's trying to pretty much build a film studio and make movies. Now usually when you play a game of Liar's Dice, the Annie Inn is only 20 bucks. But this Annie Inn is 200. Think about the math on that. 
So there's two other people at this table. They're each going to ante in 400. Now, if you win, you win 400. Now, if this is any other game of Liar's Dice, you're only winning 40. So, as long as you stay at the table and just keep playing game after game after game after game, you can become very wealthy. The gold bars are not going to get you that wealthy. Hunting and selling the meat is not going to get you that wealthy. This, right here, if you could just grind out this table, this stranger mission, this 200 per game of Liar's Dice, and keep winning $400 at a time, you can make way more money than you'll ever need for Red Dead Redemption 1. I promise you. It's going to get repetitive, old, and boring after a while, but the longer you stick at it, the more money you're going to make, the easier time you're going to have, make no mistake. For example, that explosive rifle you saw me playing with earlier, killing the buffalo trying to prove a point, that cost $5,000. So if I were you, if money's a concern, if you don't want to worry about money, grind out this and just earn and earn and earn. Just what I was gonna say. Hello. Sorry about that. I'm getting good at this. David will be All right. I know I said 40 was the last one, and technically it is, but I think this is an incredibly valuable secret that I feel like you guys should know. There's a stranger mission you're gonna come across down in Mexico. And he's an indentured servant. Now, in order to get his freedom, you have to capture a white stallion. And I mostly just want to show you the location of that, just so you know where the location of it is. And you're welcome. She says she is still the location of the stranger mission is right there in El Matadero, and you're going to find that white stallion right around in this location. Honestly, don't worry about it, don't struggle, just go there and get your white stallion. Right down from where you're at in El Matadero. And that's mostly all I have time for you in this one. Um, I could have done more tips and tricks. I didn't know I was going to push it to 40. And I was going to go to maybe 50 or something. But I think 40 will do. This is a pretty long video. I've covered so many things. Mostly made this for the PS4 and the Nintendo Switch players. Who are fortunate enough to finally be able to play this game soon. In the coming days. If you're not already playing it. Probably you're watching this now. Because you've already gotten it on PS4 and Nintendo Switch, and now you want to know how a couple things work. But I also made this for anybody and everybody playing Red Dead Redemption. Who wants to get better at the game, know some tips, tricks, get rich quick schemes, this, that, or the other. I was so happy, and am so happy, to help you out with that. My name is Sean Easy. Welcome to my world. Thank you so much for watching this video. And good luck to you on your Red Dead Redemption journeys. I hope my 41 and 41st extra bonus tip helps you out on your journeys and your playthroughs and hopefully I taught you and you learned a couple things and I helped you see it through and through. Bye bye now. I, I'm leaving tomorrow, honestly. What about your beloved? She said she would wait. Honestly, I... I'm... I'm quitting tomorrow and leaving. Quitting? I didn't say that. I, I'm fine. I'm fine. Yeah. She's my beloved. And, yeah, I love it.